I live in London. I've worked in the city for nearly 30 years. I like to keep fit, going out cycling and walking and running. So I have a very balanced life. I do consider myself a particularly positive person. So when life sort of throws things at you, um, you sort of look to the positive and, um, and sort of utilise that strength to get through um, whatever happens. A recent scan has revealed some suspicious nodules in Sue's neck. She's been referred to London Bridge Hospital's Fine Needle Unit for further tests with Dr Rose New. So I'm going to take a couple of measurements of your thyroid and what we see. There is a little lesion in the right thyroid and you could see it's hypoquic which means it's a bit darker than usual. So what we like to do is to take a biopsy of that lesion that you have on the right side. Using an ultrafine needle, Rose is collecting cells from the nodules for analysis. This will allow me to make a rapid assessment to see whether we have enough tissue for diagnosis. Rose, I'm happy to say we've got a very good sample here. A lot of patients are on a roller coaster, especially when you discover you have a lump. It's a scary feeling. The quicker you diagnose the patient, the quicker they have the treatment, and that will hopefully save their life in the long term. It is quite uh, uh, irregular, isn't it? It's got like kind of two, two components almost. So the lesion is touching the capsule but not breaching that. It's always concerning that you have multiple nodules. I think we should at least offer her the option of having the thyroidectomy. As we'll discuss at the MDT, then uh, we'll, we'll have a consensus. So Susan May is a 47-year-old uh, lady uh, who presented uh, with an incidental finding a uh, lesion in the uh, thyroid gland. Can we go through the imaging, please? Within the right lobe of the gland, there's a suspicious lesion that is hypochoic and ill-defined. There are no pathological nodes at all, but it's a suspicious thyroid lesion. And you can see it's very, very diffuse. It has all the features of a high-risk uh, possible malignancy. She's got a relatively small lesion, but there's also some, some suspicion that that may be a, a part of a multicentric uh, uh, disease. What would happen if uh, we left that untreated or partially untreated? Would that be that, uh, that those, those cancer cells will, will grow, uh, will form basically tumours, and also they could spread to the other parts of the body? It's been 10 days since Sue was diagnosed with thyroid cancer and she's determined to stay upbeat. For me, I can't deal with it any other way than be positive about it because I feel incredibly confident. I've, I've had a great last couple of weeks knowing that I'm coming in here for this. They found it, they've kept an eye on it, which is why I feel very lucky. This was always, this is what's happening on Wednesday this week. Large. <laughs> we know that probably thyroid cancer is going to be the second most common cancer in women by 2020. Partly because of kind of um, you know the fact we are detecting this uh, you know sooner, and also in northern Europe we think that the Chernobyl um, kind of disaster had an influence because of the radiation, and we think that it's probably probably a, a, a consequence. One thing that um, is concerning me is, um, is my voice um, in that when I come around, will it still be there? Um, will you have nicked a little bit? But you have to understand that there are sometimes um, things that go wrong. So I'm hoping that won't be the case. And let us know when you start feeling slightly different. Deep breath. So now the patient is asleep, the anaesthetic works were given, a couple of minutes or more, the patient will be ready for intubation. Perfect, great, okay, that's fine, you can lower the table down, and then we need to stand back, Nuria and our head ring, okay, great, fabulous. To remove the thyroid, Ricard will make an incision in the neck carefully cutting around the gland to avoid damaging important blood vessels connected to Sue's vocal cords. I think when we do a total thyroidectomy, we're always a little bit worried. 
If you damage both nerves, you could potentially end up with an aortic obstruction and the patient may need to have a tracheostomy. So that's basically the last thing you want. Now then, this is the area where the cancer is. What we want to do is separate the gland from the top. It's still attached to the windpipe. Beeps from a nerve monitor will alert Ricard that the nerves are still functioning, preventing irreparable damage. And you can see that the signal and the uh, what we call the amplitude and the uh, latency is actually good, so that means that it's actually a good signal, so the nerve is not sort of kind of being bruised in any kind of way. So we are quite happy. So what we're going to do next is to remove that uh, bit of uh, tissue here, follow the nerve up to the uh, voice box, and then remove the rest of the thyroid gland. I think we've, we're okay. This is the front, this is the right, this is the left. If we flip it over, the cancer's there. You can just feel like kind of a, uh, quite a hard module there. Perfect, good, very happy. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Everything went very well. We did uh, preserve all the important structures, though the recurrent laryngeal nerves. We removed all the, all the cancer and uh, so far everything has gone very well. How are you doing? How are you? Fine. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm Right, fine. good. How is it going? Okay. Brilliant. Everything went very well, okay? No problems at all. See you later. Brilliant. Bye bye now. Cheers, love. Take care. See you later. Oh, Thanks, guys. Well, third surgery is very delicate. We had to remove what we had to remove and preserve what we had to preserve, so that's really great. I mean, it's nothing more rewarding uh, than, than, than having uh, basically a patient who's had a big kind of potentially life-changing operation and is actually done very well. I think that's really make you very, very happy. Came out of the operation a few hours ago. I feel really good. I spoke to the consultant and he said that he has removed the thyroid in its entirety and so is confident that everything is out. That means potentially I have no more worries about it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, happy relief. I am looking forward to some food though. 7.30 last night. Three to four weeks on, my recovery is going great. My scar is healing great. Um, and that's, that's it, truly is. Um, within a month, I had a complete thyroidectomy, which now means that um, I take medication and will do for the rest of my life. I can do everything physically that I was doing before, back at work, back in the gym, back outside, and, and living the life that I was living before. I have been very lucky. I can carry on with my life. Ultimately, a small scar on my neck. I'm very lucky. I, I can't sort of get away from that feeling. It feels very good. It feels exceptionally good um, to be back in this place, back to being me. It's great. The sun is out. It's crispy. It's cold. It's melting. It's all good.